Yeah, I mean, something else that might be interesting uh, are, you know, so I've read a lot about uh, about men in particular, you know, why we are driven to do these things that that uh, that we do and something like like weightlifting or um, playing sports, things like this. Um, well, one reason why, for example, men want to weightlift is to, to build big muscles. And the research does show on uh, research on attraction that women are more attracted to, to men with big muscles. Uh, muscular men are uh, they report having more sexual partners relative to less muscular men. Um, part of this is because, uh, you know, building muscles is costly, right? It's a, it's a sort of fitness indicator, not in this not fitness in the sense of like, you know, sporty or athletic, but but fitness in terms of uh, reproductive fitness, Darwinian fitness. Um, if you can build muscles, it indicates a lot of things about you. Uh, it indicates that you're able to obtain, you know, calories, the resources necessary to build those muscles. Uh, it indicates conscientiousness, which is a personality trait. Um, someone who can, who regularly goes to the gym, that person is diligent and hardworking. They, they, uh, have goals and stick to them. Um, and then of course, you know, they confer, uh, protective advantages too. you know, people are less likely to mess with a, with a muscular guy relative to a smaller guy. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you see some of this, uh, in, in the research, um, yeah, muscular men report, uh, more sexual, sexual partners. I just yeah. want to, I just want to kind of dig into that for a second here. Um, yeah. the fact that women find those traits attractive Mm -hmm. And a man has those traits suggests that if she was to mate with him, that her children would have those traits, which means that they are more likely to reproduce because other women will find that to be attractive. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, some some call this the the sexy son hypothesis, um, <laughs> what which a, is what uh, a brilliant name. Yeah, yeah. So so this is uh, I first learned about this I think in Matt Ridley's book, The Red Queen. This uh, the sexy son hypothesis is basically this idea that women are attracted to men who are attractive to other women. And the reason is because if they have sons with this man, that their sons will also be attractive to lots of women and thereby, you know, uh, pass on those genes. But yeah, I mean, the basic idea you're, you're describing is that, yeah, when women want uh, men who have certain qualities because, you know, those qualities will tend to pass down to their offspring. Um, but I think it's also important to make clear that these aren't... Um, you know, these aren't calculated or sort of, uh, you know, deliberate, uh, you know, strategies that, that we're enacting. A lot of this is going on sort of under the hood. Um, we're not even aware of why we like what we like or why we do what we do. We just know that it makes us feel good. Um, you know, so, you know, what, when a woman likes a muscular man, it's not because, you know, all of these operations are going on. Well, if my, if all my kids will be muscular and <laughs> yeah, their the, kids will be muscular. If there's a knows. woman out there who's gone through her, <laughs> gone through that discourse that we've just had in her mind, I, I want to meet her and talk to her because she'd be that fascinating. But, um, yeah, you, you're totally correct. And that was the mm -hmm. point I, I really wanted to, to try and get out of you. Can you explain mm -hmm. how genes and what they do to promote genetic fitness and emotions and feelings and the more conscious side of the brain, how those two things interlink. I think, um, is it Robert Wright that says uh, genes are the preferences and emotions that are executors, something like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, genes are basically selected for uh, and basically through evolutionary pressures uh, shape certain behaviors. Um and of course, like there are other factors involved, cultural factors, social factors, and so on. But, you know, a lot of our behaviors, our, our strategies um, enacted through, through our genes. And it's not like we're consciously aware of it. We're just sort of going through these motions in the same way that, say, you know, when you're when you're eating sugar, um, you're not going through this calculated process of, you know, well, I'm eating the sugar because it's giving me caloric energy, which I, I can expend later and so on. Um, the sugar just makes us feel good. And our genes give us this little reward. You know, our biology gives us this little thing like, OK, you're eating sugar. It makes you feel good because that's advantageous. Um, but things don't make you feel good for no reason. Right. Like everything that makes you feel good is something that, at least in the ancestral environment, you know, paid off. Um in, a, in an evolutionary sense. Um, so when you when you see a beautiful woman or you see a particularly, you know, athletic man or whatever it happens to be, you feel a little bit good. You know, you feel some positive uh, response to that. 
And none of this is deliberate or calculated. It's, it's just sort of, you know, built right into us. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not anything that, um, that we're really thinking about necessarily. Yeah, yeah, 